An extremely important pillar of a stealth or immersive sim experience is the behaviors of Project's non-player characters. For the last couple of months, I've been hard at work tweaking enemy reactions to sight and sound stimuli from both characters and items encountered during gameplay. While these results may still appear to be pedestrian to some, the process was both difficult and extremely rewarding. So let me break down some of these systems for you. Currently, NPCs can either be stationary, guarding a specific spot like an entryway or point of interest, or they can be on patrol, either looping through or back and forth across a custom path. In future updates, I'll add in stops and starts to these paths like taking a smoke break or messing with an item in the world. But for now, this works well enough to simulate a variety of possible encounters. From there, NPCs are broken down into two hierarchies, teams and squads. The most obvious team separation would be you, the player, against all of the NPC enemies. Ultimately though, this approach can support or other NPC teams that can be either friendly or neutral to the player, and by extension, hostile or neutral to the player's enemies. The idea for this is to facilitate a wide range of opportunities for emergent gameplay as these factions meet and interact. Squads, then, are groups within a team that can broadcast information amongst each other, like targets to attack or places to investigate. But the main goal with this segmentation is to be able to limit the player's exposure to the entire team. I want the player to be able to mix up their strategies and approach each scenario differently. If you choose to engage head-on with the first group of NPCs, that shouldn't necessarily dictate how the remainder of the encounters go down. This extends to stealth mistakes as well. If you mess up and get found out, unless you're going for a non-alert run, you won't feel like you have to restart the level to have fun with the rest of it. Now let's talk about the many ways you can be discovered by NPCs. The first is sight. If an enemy sees you, he enters a suspicious state that, after a brief period of time, triggers an investigation state. If you remain within the enemy's cone of vision after being spotted, that will trigger his alert state. This timer also scales with distance, so you have more time to get out of sight the farther away you are. If you're able to avoid detection, the NPC will walk over to where he spotted you and check things out. As long as you're not spotted again, the guard will return to his post and you'll be able to proceed however you wish. However, if you are unable to find cover or duck out of sight, you'll be required to protect yourself against lethal force. But you'll also be dealing with the NPC's entire squad, which is probably a good place to introduce combat roles. At the moment, there are only two, but I have some good ideas ideas and comments suggestions on how to expand these roles in the future. The first role is the suppressor. This is typically assigned to the closest NPC to the target. Their goal is to find a spot behind cover and allow their other squad mates to push up to engage the target directly, which, as you might be able to guess, is the foundation of the second combat role, the aggressor. Their job is to get up close and personal until you're no longer moving, so you likely want to deal with them first. And there are a lot of opportunities outside of these two ideas to expand on this, like displacers that flush you out of cover with grenades or enemies that sneak through alternate routes to attack you from behind, ultimately all in the name of supporting a complex and enjoyable combat experience. If you're the type that isn't into direct combat, I have plenty of ways to distract and subvert guards to avoid detection as well. An easy one is items. Any physics-enabled prop in the world can be picked up and thrown to cause an audio disturbance. This will trigger the same suspicious slash investigation pattern caused by being seen, but you have to be a little careful here, because if an enemy sees your thrown item in the air, he'll investigate where the item was thrown from instead of where it lands. So be sure to keep that in mind when you're deploying your distractions. Another item-based stimulus to consider are weapons. If you decide to swap out an item in your inventory with something found in the level, your dropped weapon will also draw enemies off of their patrol paths to investigate. The sound of the weapon hitting the floor also causes the same audio cue that a thrown item does, so be sure that no one is around whenever you decide to trade up. At the moment, they just walk up to the out-of-place weapon, stare at it for a moment, and then walk away. But in the future, I'm thinking of something like a ready-or-not evidence-secured approach so you won't be able to go back to a dropped weapon later if you didn't hide it well enough. Once you do lure an NPC from his typical location, I wouldn't blame you if you felt like relieving him of his responsibilities. And you can use any firearm you like, but some weapons are going to draw the attention of any squad that hears the ballistic explosion, so it's easy to trigger more than one squad to come looking for you. Instead, use a suppressed weapon to vastly reduce your chances of being discovered. Suppressed weapons aren't completely silent though, so just like the other sound stimuli, you'll want to know your surroundings well before you choose to act. In the future, I plan to introduce other options like 
like takedowns, physics-based interactions, and special player abilities that will help you quietly deal with enemies in both lethal and non-lethal fashion. Finally, what happens after you dispatch an NPC and their teammate discovers their remains? The affected squad will scour the area where the body was found to catch the perpetrator. Each position they check is stored in a list so they're not revisiting the same spots over and over, and this is shared with the rest of the squad as well. So they're already relatively intelligent at splitting up to cover as much ground as possible. They first check all spots in the location of the body. If the alert timer doesn't run out yet, and they exhaust the entire area without discovering a target, the previously saved locations list is reset, and they begin spreading out to further spots on the map. This is also the same pattern used with the combat routine. If you get into an engagement with a squad, but decide to ditch it and hide until they return to their non-alert status. And that's pretty much where I'm at with the NPCs today. Apart from the additions I've already mentioned, I want to get a body dragging system working so you can clean up your messes, more thrown items that don't cause as much noise so you have a greater variety of equipment to play with, and further iterate on all of these ideas presented here to create as fun and in-depth of an experience as I'm capable of delivering. So that's all I have for today, but I have a lot more coming as well, so thanks for watching, give the channel a like and subscribe, and I'll have another one ready as soon as I'm able.